maybe why you should. <laughs> um, you're going to understand the challenges around different cloud solutions of open, uh, public, private, and hybrids. Um, and we're going to look at the expectations you may want to look for. Um, we'll go over issues. You can read the agenda. <laughs> um, so without further ado, making myself look stupid, here we go. <laughs> um, so the first thing is everybody wants to share. Um, everyone wants to be able to have their files on all their devices. Um, we're in a very bring your own device world. Um, so a lot of companies have employees in various states, countries, wherever. Um, and we want to be able to share that openly and easily to all of them. Well, the issues with that is if your IT department doesn't like that, uh, you have a lot of kind of rogue employees, and I'm guilty of doing it a couple of times in past positions, <laughs> where, ah, well, we can just throw it on Dropbox and share it with our department. No one will ever know. No biggie, no harm, no foul. Well, there is a harm and a foul. Um, one, you have no idea where those files are. Sure, they're at Dropbox, but where are they? Um, they say they're secured. You have no idea if they really are or not. Um, and it has the potential to jeopardize any relationships with your other businesses that are other companies you're dealing with. So the dangers of your shadow IT, and you can see that Gardner predicted in 2017 the chief marketing officer is going to spend more than IT, or spend more on IT than the CTIO. Not good. Because they're going to be like, ah, well, this looks pretty, let's do it. You have no security overview, no one has any idea what's going on. The dangers of going around IT is you have no idea if, granted, Dropbox is up a lot of the time, but what if they're not? Your files are gone. Um, do they archive in case something goes catastrophically wrong? How do you know your files aren't being accessed by everyone in the world? Granted, they say they're private, but who knows? Um, and what's their service level agreement? Are they going to be up all the time? Are they going to have maintenance this day, that day, whatever? We never know. <laughs> um, the recent survey from Pulnum, I always pronounce them wrong, Institute, shows that more than half of 4,000 respondents have sensitive and confidential data in their cloud. And 39% believe moving data to the clouds decrease their security posture. 63 have admitted they don't have a clue what cloud providers are doing to secure their data. And 35 have gone ahead and handed over their encryption keys to the cloud. <laughs> Great idea. Um, you see it every day. Companies all over the world, big, small, and different, um, get, for lack of a better term, hacked, breached. Um, our government just did it and lost a bunch of federal employees, so security numbers and information. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice my uh, in-laws work for the government and the post office, so I'm sure they're really pleased about that. <laughs> um, so as you can see by our beautiful little graph, <laughs> pretty much everyone wants... I would love to. Where is it? Looks like a speaker. Nope. Thank you. That mute button right there. Thanks. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Thank you. That was actually quite annoying. <laughs> yes, much. Um, okay. So you can see by our graph, uh, pretty much everyone wants an on-premise enterprise file sync and share solution. The feature or the focus being on on-premise. They want to be able to touch their own files while being able to sync them to their phones, tablets, computers, wherever. Um, and the ones that don't, honestly, the ones that really don't know outweigh the ones that aren't interested by a whopping 1%, but whatever. 97% of cloud-based uh, enterprise file sync and share users are interested in, it, in just that. Let's see. Okay. 
So the non-adopters, even though they have not done it or have not found the perfect one, if there ever is one, um, you can see they're still interested. The ones that may not be interested at all are ones that have tried others that didn't do what they wanted to or didn't integrate quite how they wanted with all of their single sign-ons or however they have their infrastructure set up. Um, but you can see that 61% of non-adopters would consider if they have one on-premise. And the factors behind that, sorry, as you can see, I have no notes, which were really kind on my version, but <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of it is you have flexibility and control over where it's stored. You know where it is. If you want five servers, you can provision five servers, and they're all there. All your files are right there. Someone shares it out the place they want, and it's really bad, yank the hard drive out. It's yours. Um, you can leverage it with your, on, your existing on-premise applications. So really can't think of a great example of this, but at a prior company, I worked for Television Network. We had schedules that were hard copies that we wanted to pass around, and we really needed a on-premise file sync, so we could sync it between departments. We somewhat used SharePoint, didn't really work all that well, but that's what they chose, um, which resulted in a lot of people using Dropbox or Box or whatever. Um, the other factors driving their interest is that you can actually secure it. You can put it behind your single sign-on, behind your firewall, behind your X. Yeah, exactly, your VPN, whatever you want it behind, you can put it there. Um, and it gives you control to comply with your government regulations if you're in the healthcare industry or financial industry or whatever, because you control where everything is. Um, Again, you can keep an act, uh, you can keep access to, to data of local copies to help migrate between to and fro. If you roll up new slaves, whatever you send them over, not an issue. Um, and the types of data being prohibited from being stored by stored by third parties is obviously your confidential data, your financial stuff. God forbid you're storing that in the cloud, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your regulated data, records dealing with really anything that your company regulates. Could be upcoming products, could be financial, which is the next one. Could be employee records, which, believe it or not, some people actually do store in the cloud. Um, another one is your intellectual property. Um, the, uh, the final one is, and this is only 10% of the time, is some companies really don't care where you store things. You can store anything you want, anywhere you want. I've seen people store complete database backups in Dropbox. It happens, and it kind of makes you say, what are you thinking, but... No, actually, they were. It was like, this is going to be really easy to send it to Bob over here. <laughs> I don't need to go around all these hoops IT set up. <laughs> I've been that guy. <laughs> um, you can see 90% of companies prohibit some type of their data being stored in the cloud. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is, but everyone has something they don't want out for everyone to see. So most people have the following adoption models. You can go to your public cloud model, which is Dropbox, Box, everything's in the cloud. You have no on-premise solution or part of it. Well, people got tired of that. So they rolled out a hybrid cloud model where the application itself is in the cloud, but some of your data is on-premise. Um, then you get the on-premise model, which is what I'm actually trying to pitch here, <laughs> where everything's on-premise. You know where, again, everything is. You can encrypt it your way. You can integrate it with whatever you so choose to do. And the remaining 5% don't know, or too soon to tell, or haven't looked at it at all. So the evolution of the cloud. You, we've had a public cloud, we've had a private cloud, and now we're moving into a federated cloud, which is kind of an interesting topic. So for a public cloud, it's software as a service, it's easy and quick, and you don't have to think about it. You don't care. It's just there. The bad, getting too centralized. You say you share with 
X. Well, you can't automatically sync that over to Y without another third party that syncs between the two. Um, they may not be as fast as you want. Granted, they have tons of data centers all over the world, but everyone's had a situation where they don't have the best connection. It would have been really nice to have a hard copy on their machine. Um, the other limiting factor that I see a lot is cost. Other providers that I can't name off the top of my head, they can get really, really pricey when you start storing a lot of files there. And the other issue is you have no idea where it is. Like I said, they have data centers all over the world. It can be in Europe, it can be in Germany, it can be in the US, it can be down in Mexico, you have no idea. It's somewhere. And they're proprietary. So again, sharing with other providers, you run into the issue of, well, you can't. Um, and the remaining issue is backdoors and security. They say they're secure, but like I said, everyone gets hacked at some point. It's inevitable. There is no perfect security. So that brought in the private cloud. People got tired of these issues, so they wanted an on-premise cloud. It was secure. Yeah, it was flexible, it was fast, and you had no data silos. But you can't get it out. It's your private cloud on your premise. You have no way to share to someone on their phone, tablet, desktop, blah. Besides for maybe a VPN. <laughs> but there's no, uh, this is not a panacea. New word I learned, interesting. Um, it made collaboration and sharing between different organizations difficult because they had to use your VPN. And if they're a different company, they have their own VPN. It's a pain in the butt, set up multiple ones and switch and whatever. And the users have to choose between the convenience of off-premise and security and flexibility of on-premise. So that brings us to the hybrid cloud, which is federated cloud, essentially. Um, you have standalone clouds that can have individual policies, and you can connect them directly for instant collaboration. They have your on-premise clouds can talk securely with each other, allowing you to have, like I said, five, six, seven slave servers that all can communicate with master and sync each other. They form essentially a cluster. Um, administrators can sure choose what to store and host and where. So say you want financial records on server B over here. That's all you want over there. Make it happen. So that way if something happens, you have one central place you can go find your files. For the users, good. Yes, it's coming. <laughs> um, for users, everything is transparent. They have no idea that any of this is happening in the background. All they see is folders and files that are jumping through and getting what they want. And the last thing is security. You can control it how you want. It's behind your stuff. You can do whatever you want with it, which is what everyone really wants. So here comes a uh, somewhat marketing pitch. Um, the beauty of the Federated Cloud with a firewall on top of it is you can limit by file type file path, user group, device location, time, blah, et cetera. It was fun, I actually wrote this. So you can limit by a lot of things that maybe you really don't need to or want to, but whatever, you have the ability. Uh, MAC address, IP, device type, if they're using a desktop client, whatever. Um, you have a lot of people that really wanna do that for some reason. So the benefits and options of on-premise is you have security, obviously. You have your own access control, your own authentication, and your data is in your hands. You can leverage whatever you have in-house. Uh, we've integrated with Salesforce. We've integrated with SharePoint, with a bunch of other ones that I could not name if you had a gun to my head. Um, and we say reliability. It's as reliable as your infrastructure is. But if it's yours, it's your baby, it's going to be reliable. Um, the other beauty is it's storage agno agnostic. We don't care if you have a RAID 10 or a RAID 5. We don't care if you're sitting on a little server in your closet. We have no limitation of how big, how small, and indifferent you have to be. <laughs> and user adoption, which really isn't a big point. As you can tell, this was prepared by marketing. But users don't really care so much. They're going to use whatever you tell them, or they're not. You can't really control that. Um, do what? <laughs> it 
Exactly, yeah. Well, then they just spoof their MAC address and do what they want. <laughs> um, and then you have convenience and compliance with your audits. It's behind your stuff. You know how it works. You don't have to guess. You don't have this gray area where you don't know what's really happening. It's in the cloud. I don't really know what they're doing, but I'm going to say it's safe. Oh, this is beautiful in here. So here's if you can read this nice little cluster of foolishness. Uh, <laughs> demand comprehensive integration. They want a mobile application. They want a web application. They want to integrate. You guys want to integrate with your authentication. You want to work with any database. You want to work with your storage devices, sysop, whatever. So we integrate with iOS, Android, pretty much any mobile device with a browser. Um, you can manage your documents, collaborate with each other, whatever. We support SSL, TLS, AES-256, encryption. We actually do 512 now. Um, you can integrate with LDAP, Active Directory, SAML, Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL, Postgres, SQLite. Yeah. Um, we work with your web dev, your CIFS, your log managers and monitors. Um, we give file level forensics so you can see, you know, what's really going on, what a user's doing, when they're doing it, why they're doing it. And we support virtualization, which isn't really a key point anyone does. <laughs> so here's the marketing pitch that I have been told. Um, with OnCloud. You can access and share information across any device, anytime, regardless where it's stored. Um, again, big point here is collaboration. It's stored wherever you want it, but all your users see are their files. It's a white label. You can brand it however you want. You want your company logo on the top. You want a dancing unicorn up there. Make it so. Um, and because it's hosted locally, IT can do what they need to do and do their job and make it as secure or integrated as they need it to be. And the federated cloud, which is what you were asking, the examples are actually next. But <laughs> um, the beauty of the federate, federated cloud is you have your on-site storage stuff. You, you have your SharePoint, your VMware, your FTC, your EMC2, your Windows Server, blah. Well, with OnCloud, you can sync all of that with all your users, but if they, for whatever reason, or if you so choose to allow it, have your stuff on Amazon S3 or Dropbox or Google Drive or Box or one of the other five trillion cloud storage providers out there, you can map those so that all they see is a directory. They have no idea if it's on S3, Dropbox, Drive, locally, where. It's all in one place. They can see it, and you can control it. Um, you have universal file access. So, like I said, you can access it anywhere it is with no regard of where it actually is. You have a single point of control because the singular application pulls everything in one place and you don't have to go jump to 50 things to change one policy. Um, APIs, so you can integrate with pretty much anything you want. Um, sure, we offer out-the-box integrations, but if you want to integrate with some really obscure thing, do it. <laughs> and we provide multiple deployment options. You can provide our, we've seen people deploy to, oh my god, little Raspberry Pis and throw them around. Um, so it's pretty lightweight. You can put it on pretty much anything. I actually run, ran a copy on my cell phone when I was developing somewhere and my computer died. <laughs> um, and it's the only solution that I guess we know of that delivers the benefits of open source and commercial. The core of our product is open source. Um, anyone can see what we're doing. Anyone can contribute, assuming it passes our kind of stringently annoying code reviews. Um, we have file firewall inspections and our, that inspects your connections and file action requests. So say you have a user from X that you don't want access seeing from Y from this location. Well, you can make that happen. And everything is logged. No, it's not at the network layer. It's in, it's in the application layer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Uh, private cloud is going to be on your server. It's your own private cloud on premise. But what? Yeah. <laughs> it's what everyone calls it. <laughs> so, in action, um, we have an IT industry research leader that uses on cloud to distribute strategic sale material and territory performance metrics to its global field teams. Obviously, I can't really say their name loud, or I guess they would have put it in the slide. Um, we were a very, very large religious company that's in Europe that I can't name, but there's only one gigantic one over there, so use your imagination, um, that we store a lot of stuff for. Um, so they integrate with a lot of different things. They use SAML and a bunch of different technologies that really make our head hurt, but the integrations are pretty painless. Um, we have some manufacturing companies that want to give their executives access to sensitive data when they're out speaking whatever they seem to be doing. Um, and we have some retail investment firms that uses it to collaborate with their high net worth customers. And now we got some analysts. Uh, Garner, Garner says on cloud is a good fit for companies that want to run enterprise file sync and share on premises, keeping control and of and managing the system and their files, leaving content in their current location. Uh, ESG says there's no longer a one size fits all world for enterprise sync and share. We're seeing companies like on cloud emerge with on premise and hybrid options, giving IT organizations flexibility to choose where their what data stored where and the ability to leverage existing investments while supporting syncing, collaboration, or requirements of mobile users. So the whole hoopla of this is leave your data where it is. You want to provide a frictionless, collaborative environment for all of your end users. You want to be able to improve, manage, and control the visibility of these files. And you want integration with whatever you've got. You don't want to have to redo your entire infrastructure to add sync and sharing. Um, you want to meet the compliance from your higher ups that jump on your back and say, well, this isn't doing what we want it to do. And everyone really wants to control their own destiny. So that's it. I will try to answer any of your questions I can as poorly as possible. <laughs> but that's the end of my horribly spiel. We do not do client-side encryption at the moment. Um, we, oh, sorry. You wanted to know if we supported end-to-end -end encryption since I kind of jump up and down on security. Um, with, at the current moment, no, we don't do client-side encryption. The encryption is all done server-side, and you can actually control how it's encrypted through a variety of layers. You can actually implement your own layer if you want. But coming in, actually, I believe the next version that we're investigating right now, we are looking to add client-side encryption, which is kind of painful. Yes. Sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, you can, when you're using a desktop client or a mobile device or whatever, you can set the URL uh, if you're master dictates it has to be HTTPS, they have to use HTTPS. It will reject any access via non-secure channels. So you're asking if we have remote wipe abilities. Yes. Um, if you have a rogue user um, that decides, oh, I'm going to steal all these company secrets and run away and disconnect from your cloud, yes. When they disconnect from your cloud after X period of time, it pretty much says, hey, if you don't reconnect and sync again, your stuff's going to disappear. Um, it, you can dictate the window, but how it sits right now, if they don't connect, I think it's 10 or 30 days or whatever, their files disappear. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. When you remove their, what you can do then is actually suspend their user account and they will have no access to anything even if it's local. Even if it's local. That, yeah, that I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a good question. I, yeah. <laughs> For the shortest time, you can set it to expire. You can set it actually to anything you want. Um, you can actually go to seconds. I believe we can go all the way down to, I think 30 seconds is the absolute minimum we can do. Yes. If, if the phone's lost and the user is, or the phone is connected, as soon as you open the application, it calls home. The application says, hey, your account's dead and boom, you can't do anything. <laughs> so what you're, I think what you're asking is why should we use PHP since most gurus are... <laughs> Okay, so. Okay. so you're more comfortable with, say, Python or Ruby or anything but PHP. Yeah, yeah. yeah that seems to be the, uh, lack of a better word, the guru perspective. <laughs> um, I, I really can't badmouth PHP since I'm a PHP developer. Um, all I can say is PHP is changing a lot. Um, a lot of the dogma towards it are for prior versions when it really sucked. Um, but nowadays, it, it's really come a long way. Um, as far as why you should use us over Python or, or C file, um, I really can't give you, as far as a language itself, a reason why. But the product itself, we provide more granular granular control. Um, we provide more in-depth encryption. Um, we provide actually much more custom customization because say you choose to go with our enterprise application, we have a team of consulting blahs that will actually custom develop pretty much anything you want to make our application fit into what you have. Hmm. Yeah. Well, to be to be honest, the noobs kill about anything. So, <laughs> yeah, um, and, and that is a bad thing about PHP is there's a lot of bad information that people entering the world of development say, "Oh, this is really easy to pick up. We'll pick PHP up." And then when they read like W three schools or <laughs> our W three C schools and get all kinds of nice security holes and injections and all sorts of foolishness, and then yeah. 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 Um, one of the biggest issues that people run into with PHP are SQL injections. Um, yeah, it, it's any language. Um, we use a very, very, very well-known ORM called Doctrine, um, which pretty much converts everything to a prepared statement and makes it really easy for us. Even, even if we make a mistake and it passes our review process, the ORM gives us another layer of say, cush <laughs> that'll catch our mistakes a lot of the time. Um, roadmap items that are really hot. Um, let's see. One of, the new, one of the new roadmap items that we've had a lot of, I guess, requests for, there's two that I can speak of. One is encryption, and these are two of the areas that I personally am involved in, which is why I know about them. Um, encryption, a lot of people want end-to-end -end encryption. It's kind of a difficult issue to solve on our end, but it is something we're looking to implement here in the short term. Um, the other being firewall. A lot of people want to be able to restrict access to a single folder for 
whatever reason, if they're on if they're on an Android device, they can't get into this folder. I don't know why. Not a huge Android fan, but you know whatever. Um, people want that ability. At the moment, Firewall can't block a singular folder. Um, in next version, I can not promise in the next version, but in the very near future, that ability is going to be there. You can do file level or, fo or folder level. Um, first, it's going to be folder level, and then if customers market whatever dictates, it will go down to the file level. But the issue we run into there is, what if you rename the folder? Well, that, yeah, that, that's the issue we're running into. But <laughs> anything else? I am not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. We actually. Uh, I don't know if it's Ansible. But we have uh, like a DigitalOcean single click install. We have packages. Our packaging team. They've got to be on crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I get what you're saying. Uh, I mean, they publish to all the repositories on any Linux distro out there. So I, I couldn't tell you all the things they deploy to. <laughs> Of course, someone brings up that huge uh, debacle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it's funny. Lucas, um, who was a big guy in there, that kind of got drove through the mud. He's our chief security guy. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really a part of that whole debacle, but it's kind of interesting talking to him. He's like, "Oh, check this link out," and it was all this controversy. I honestly have no idea if we've got a new version out there or what they did. I know they came to an agreement, but I could not tell you what it is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> At the moment, I don't think we have any Docker or Vagrant images out publicly available. I could be wrong. Again, our packaging team deploys or does all kinds of foolishness. Um, it, oh, yeah, somebody's done it. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure I'm early, but <laughs> thank you, guys. Citrix Zen Server gives you everything you need to integrate, manage, and automate a virtual data center, all on an enterprise-class, cloud-proven virtual platform, and at a third of the cost of other solutions. But why even bother with virtualizing your server infrastructure in the first place? Well, let's say you have a traditional one-server-to-one-application architecture, but you're running out of resources and performance is suffering. Once you order new server hardware, you'll wait for delivery. Configure it, install your business application, stage and test the server, and finally, add it to your production farm. If you've been through this process before, you know it can take weeks or even months. 
You also know it's a manually intensive process that will burden your team every time you outgrow your current setup. With a virtual server solution, you could accomplish all of that in less than half a day. Server virtualization software separates the OS and application from the underlying server hardware. And with multiple virtual machines on a single server, you can use each of them to run different OSs and applications. This makes it possible to move your virtual machines from one piece of hardware to another whenever you want, to maximize utilization, simplify maintenance, or recover from a hardware failure. And without slowing down your applications, users. Clearly, server virtualization provides big benefits. And Citrix Zen Server provides even more. Since it's built on an open platform, Zen Server plays well with your existing hardware, storage systems, and IT management software as well as with the industry's leading cloud service providers. Best of all, you can get started by downloading a fully functional, production-ready version of Zen Server for free. After a 10-minute installation process, you'll see how easy it is to start virtualizing your workloads and automating your IT management processes. And when you're ready for a richer set of management tools, just upgrade to one of the premium editions of Zen Server. So whether you're interested in virtualizing servers for the first time, expanding your server virtualization footprint, or moving server workloads to the cloud. Download and install Zen Server today and see how it can help you simplify your IT environment. Citrix Zen Server. Do more. Don't spend more. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business-critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up.